Hey guys, let's talk about last night's episode of Sleepy Hollow. It was a great episode. I really enjoyed it. We start off the episode with Ichabod and he's sitting by a gravesite and he gets shot in the neck with a tranquilizer. And when he wakes up, he's in a room full of uh, men who basically want him to sing for his supper kind of thing. Like they want him to prove that he is actually Ichabod Crane. And they want to know the very first time that, they, that he met Arthur Bernard. And Arthur Bernard was a free slave who was being accused of treason. And the British army wanted um, uh, Ichabod to basically torture him so that he would reveal who Cicero was. And throughout the episode, we quickly find out that Ichabod isn't really down for uh, how the British army is treating these Americans. And he kind of stands up for them. And he lets um, Bernard go. And when he does that... His men, uh, the, the British army, basically shoot and kill uh, Bernard. And this uh, makes um, Ichabod turn on his own men and he stabs his captain. And when he does that, his captain basically like beasts out and all of a sudden he turns into like this devil like looking man and he like slams Ichabod across the room like in in, in the forest it's it's kind of like a crazy scene but this is the moment when Ichabod basically jumps ship from the British army and he joins like the uh, American Revolution and in during this time he also meets his future wife Katrina and she's a witch and she basically comes to him and says you know deep down within your heart which side you should really be on. And so when he does choose, I guess, the good side, this is how him and Katrina, you know, find one another. And he goes to her with his wounds, and that's how, you know, I'm sure that the story begins between Ichabod and Katrina. Now, earlier on in the episode, Katrina came to Abby in, in a, a vision, and she basically told him... Um, told Abby that there is a way to save Ichabod and there is a man out there named the Sin Eater and if you find him he will be able to not only separate the Headless Horseman from Ichabod but he will also be able to cure him of his sins and, be, and in doing that that will unlink the bond that they have. So, of course, uh, Abby's like, how the heck do I find this guy? So, who does she turn to? She turns to her captain so that he can release her sister Jenny from, like, the crazy loony bin that she's sitting in. And what I really like about this, it's sort of like the sister Scooby gang, and they're off on this mission, and they're trying to find Ichabod. And, you know, Jenny was off doing a bunch of missions back in the day, and so she has an idea of where she might be able to begin with this search. So they quickly find out that there's a man out there named Henry Parrish, and he is the man who is the Sin Eater. And basically what he does is he reaches into people's souls, and he takes away their sins, and he in basically internalizes them and takes them on himself. So they go to him, and he's very reluctant to want to do this because he's like, I don't want to take on anyone, any more sins, and I'm basically over and done with this. And then he realizes who Ichabod is, and obviously he has a, a second opinion. But the episode is actually really interesting because we get all these flashbacks and we're getting to a, a really great sense of who Ichabod is and how he became, you know, this kind of gentle soul that he is today. And it's great. Um, so, you know, when he's back in the room with the Freemasons, they basically tell him there's only one way that you can save Sleepy Hollow. And the, and the apocalypse from happening. And that is if you take your own life. You have to die in order for the, the rest of the world to be saved. So, you know, he's, he's, he's faced with the fact that he's going to have to sacrifice himself for the greater good. And Abby at this time finds him and is basically like, I don't think so. You are not going anywhere. I'm not going to let this happen. There is another way. We found a man. Basically, Katrina came to me and she told me that I needed to find this sin eater. And I found him. And there's always another way. And and Crane is like, listen, Abby, uh, I appreciate your help. But basically, this is what we're here to do. And this is what I'm going to do. And it's a really great moment. You know, she, he tells her to leave the room. She refuses. She's holding his hand. And... You know, and it just shows that the bond between the two of them is, is, is really great at this point. And he, you know, confesses that he's terrified. You know, he obviously doesn't really want to do it, but he's willing to do it anyway. So he drinks the poison, and now we're just sort of sitting and waiting. I mean, let's face it. We all know that Ichabod Crane ain't going nowhere. He's the heart of the show. And in walks the Sin Eater. And he basically tells him, 
you know, there is a way that I can slow down the poison right now and then I can cast like a spell and I can help you to um, unlink you from the Headless Horseman. And there's, uh, you know, a moment where he has to, he, you know, the, the uh, Ar um, Arthur Bernard basically reappears in sort of like a vision and he's telling him, you know, you need to let go of all that you think you did because I died. Like, I died for a reason. I died so that you could become you know, the savior of humanity at this point. And so, you know, absolve yourself of all the guilt that you have for my death because it was all for the greater good. And they have this moment and it happens and you see like two piles of blood on the table and they start to separate and that is like the, the unlinking of the Headless Horseman and Ichabod. And it's a great scene and it's kind of like, ooh, kind of creepy, but it works. And then um, the Sin Eater basically sops up uh, the blood and eats it and kind of gross but you know that's his job so you know Abby quickly grab like you know hugs him hugs Crane and it's a really great moment and you know one of the great things about this see this, this series is the relationship between Abby and Crane and you know it's not necessarily a will they won't they kind of uh, a, a relationship it's sort of the emotional connection that they're creating the bond that they're creating with one another and that's great and I like that it's really being um, strengthened over each episode. Fascinating uh, exploration to see what they actually do there. But right now, the relationship between Abby and Crane is wonderful, and I really enjoy how the show is, is expanding on that. So right now, what I do enjoy as well is the fact that, you know, we have the Freemasons, we have Abby, we have Jenny, and we have the Sin Eater kind of all on the side of, I guess, good. And they will also be able to go up against the Headless Horseman and his, you know, his, his destruction on Sleepy Hollow whenever that time comes. And we end with, you know, the Headless Horseman basically going to... Uh, almost like the gravesite of where Ichabod rose at the very beginning of the season, almost like he's doing his own little detective work to, to see where he can find, you know, almost like going to uh, Ichabod's gravesite to see if he can find where Ichabod is now. So, you know, obviously there's still going to be a lot of great juicy storylines to come, but at this point we're almost halfway through the season and it's great. The, all the relationships are great. You know, obviously it'd be nice to find a little bit more about the detective, uh, Detective Irving, and, you know, is he really on the, their side? Is he, like, what role is he really playing? Because at this point he's sort of almost like the very skeptical uh, police chief, but he's going along with it anyway because, you know, he did see the Headless Horseman. So it's kind of crazy. It's kind of cool. And the show's fun. It's not taking itself too seriously. The opening scene was great with the baseball game. And basically Abby, you know, teaching uh, Crane about the, the game of baseball and how it relates to the grander uh, scheme of life. And, uh, you know, and Abby basically telling uh, Crane that he's home and, you know, he, he needs to really embrace that. And I really enjoy that the relationship that these two have. I'm enjoying the relationship between Jenny and um, Abby. And I think all in all, like the this, this series is, is starting to really um, gel very well together. And I'm enjoying that. So another great episode this week, and I can't wait to see you guys next week. Bye.